Hey, how's it going? So, like, I've been following, well, I follow YouTube and Twitter and stuff, and, uh, and of course, I follow the news to see what's going on. And, and what's interesting is to follow Twitter because you, you kind of get, like, the pulse of, of the different sides, if you will. And on the pro-Kiev side, whether it be of people in Ukraine or, for the most part, people outside of Ukraine, mostly in Europe, Western Europe and the United States and Canada, of course, you know, there's the dawning realization that uh, um, the Kiev regime is just running out of gas. It's going to lose. They're, they're, they're kind of like realizing that all this talk of like not enough weapons and they're seeing enough of the forced conscriptions that are going on here in Ukraine and uh, all, all kinds of different data points that are getting too numerous to be ignored. The pro-Kiev side is seeing that uh, the Russians are winning, the Kiev regime is losing. They're reconciling themselves to that fact, uh, but at the same time, they're all of a sudden starting about Poland getting into this war. Poland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some information that I've been getting from Western Ukraine is that there is a concerted effort to have people feel that Western Ukraine and Poland are conjoined. So this notion of Poland going in, it, it, it's, being, um, it's a seed that is being sown on multiple levels by multiple different organisms, Western media, the Polish leadership class, but there's a lot of propaganda uh, among different people to have Poland be part of a, quote, coalition of the willing. It wouldn't be NATO. It would just be Poland, but armed by NATO. Mm -hmm. You know, since the start of this conflict, you know, uh, Russia has been losing, losing catastrophically. Hundreds of thousands of Russian soldiers dying every day, you know. Yeah, it's smirk, right? And uh, now, 14 months in, the Russians seem to be getting very, very close to what they originally said was their objective. Demilitarization. And demilitarization, of course, in this context, means the absolute annihilation of the Kiev regime forces. They are on their third army as uh, Douglas McGregor has counted, because there was the army that started in February of 22, then the second army that they built up uh, over the summer and into the fall that was broken in these catastrophic offensives in Kharkov and Kherson, and now this third army that is basically conscripts and territorial defense forces with a small nucleus of hardcore Kiev regime nationalists that are basically disciplinary units at this point. I mean, they, according to Douglas McGregor, who is an experienced military officer who has seen combat up close and personal, and who would know what he's talking about, this is the third army that the Russians are destroying. And the Kiev regime is getting to the end of its tether. They're freaking out. And so now it's all turning towards the notion of bringing Poland in. Now, the issue becomes, will Polish entry into this conflict widen the war into NATO? I think a lot of European people and their governments are going to completely freak out over that notion. Uh, the Germans are going to throw a hissy fit, and the French too, because the fact that Poland is going up head-to-head -head against Russia in Ukraine well, you got to understand that, see, if that happens, as far as the Russians are concerned, those are not a brother people. Those are fucking Poles. And they're going to go to town on them. Because you got to keep in mind in this conflict so far, the Russians, with a few key exceptions, have not broken out their best gear, their best tanks, their best missiles. Oh, they flew a few kinjals over there in March of uh, 22, and another few kinjals here and there over the year, and then another big strike in um, just outside of Kiev that killed off, as is now being confirmed, 
400 NATO uh, advisors and private military contractors. And by the way, the NATO officers apparently that were killed were all retired. Huh? So that way, it's not officially NATO. It's the exact same play that they did with the divers that, according to Seymour Hersh, the Americans used to blow up the Nord Stream pipeline. They used retired divers or divers who were no longer active duty so they could get around the, 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 requirement, the constitutional requirement in the United States for Congress to be advised of any uh, uh, military action by the White House. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, that's, that strike has been confirmed. These little Kinjal strikes, you know, in March, again, this March, and over the year here and there, it's, been, it's happened a few times on some key targets that the Russians had, but they haven't gone to town on Ukraine. They haven't, like, leveled it. And they can, whenever they want to. They've been going out of their way to minimize civilian casualties. The casualties... Uh, according to the United Nations, the civilian casualties are less than 10,000. Now, that's a horrifying number. But compared to the losses of both army groups, of the Russians and the, and the Kiev regime, those combined in terms of killed in action, well, Kiev has lost over 200,000 men, for crying out loud. And the BBC, its best estimate is the Russians have not lost more than 20,000 men. So... 10,000 civilian killed is a horrifying number, but compared to 220,000 killed on both sides, it's 5%, less than 5%. But insofar as going to war with Poland, the Russians are not going to have such scruples. They're going to go to town. The, the Poles, rather, they are setting themselves up to be the next proxy army against Russia, and the Russians, they... they they don't care about the Poles. Because remember, the Russians in Ukraine, they are defending ethnic Russians, their people. The Poles aren't their people. But that seems to be the general direction of travel. And I just wanted to do this quick video to update you that, though insofar as the sentiment is concerned, the propaganda, the astroturfed, support for Polish incursion into this war, it is growing. And so I think that the odds, I mean, it, you can't really put odds on something like this, but, you know, I would say odds, even though I shouldn't, but I'd say it's 60-40 that the Poles do get involved in this conflict. Mm -hmm. And it'll be a catastrophe for them, a complete catastrophe. Will that damage to Poland, bring in the rest of NATO? That's the real question. Understand what's going on. 